everybody and welcome back. It's me, Cyber Warrior, and this is WTF Wednesday. Now, before we get started, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. Hit that bell so you're notified anytime I put out a new video. And uh, let's get right into it. So, there are two articles that I read today uh, that really go along with WTF Wednesday. And they're real touchy subjects to me. And the reason for that is is because I always thought that even with how the dark side or the black hats or the attackers and, and, and really your cyber criminals acted, um, I always thought that you know there was always a motivation, whether financial or a dislike of a company or politically motivated. You know the the reasoning behind it usually kept them from crossing the line of attacking. Um, and, and releasing information uh, for hospitals and that, that could really you know hurt patients as well as children so your schools and things like that now don't get me wrong it's one thing when students you know breach their schools or take advantage of security flaws to change grades or you know do something that shows the school that they're insecure or whatever the case may be but it's a whole nother ball game when an attacker, an, a malicious attacker, actually gets a hold of a school um, and drops some ransomware, breaches the system, and then due to not paying the ransom, they release files and personal information on the students, on the employees, on everybody. And again, you know, if it was segregated or, or rather if there was a differentiation to just the employee so adults now i'm not saying it's right i'm not saying it should be done i'm just saying i thought there was a line i, I did maybe it's the um maybe it's just me maybe it's my naivety if that's even a word uh or how naive i am but i really did think attackers had lines they would not cross and the fact is that Last month, Las Vegas' largest public school district um, did announce that a hacker compromised some of its files with ransomware. They didn't pay the ransom, and it was just recently found out that whomever did this actually did release uh, PII addresses, phone numbers, um, financial data, social security numbers on the students of that school district as well as the employees. Um, and so though this isn't the worst of the articles I'm going to discuss, um, it is still in my eyes something that's pretty bad. And again, you know, attacking companies, attacking, you know, the, the defenses and, you know, all those three letter agencies and, and, you know, government and things like that. I'm not saying it's right, but I have an easier time stomaching something like that um, than I do this article about Las Vegas' school district and the next one. Um, it really does make you go, you know, what the is going on with people? And like I said, I maybe I'm naive, but I thought there's just lines that weren't crossed. Now, it was either last week or the week before I talked about the hospital that was breached with ransomware they were notified that it was a hospital not the university and immediately sent the decryption key and released the hospital from the ransom um unfortunately somebody died but they were they did know what they were doing um you know or i can't say they knew what they were doing they found out they hit the wrong target and released said target so i um you know even though what they did was wrong and somebody did die from it, uh, maybe they had a change of morality, maybe they did hit the wrong place, um, whatever the case may be, you know, there was no ransom that needed paid, there were no files released, um, you know, they immediately sent the decryption key and released this hospital's files. However, um, you know, th this school district never paid the ransom, and of course, all this PII got out. Now, going on to even worse news. 
there was a major hospital system hit with a cyber attack and it's potentially the largest in US history and that is universal health uh, services there's more than 400 locations and they're all primarily in the US they all began to fail this past weekend and the reason for that was ransomware now I get it um, you know health systems hospitals uh, a lot of people know that there's there's insecurities I mean there's insecurities and in everything but just due to the red tape and the way that a lot of your programs and infrastructure are within the hospital systems due to funding and just everything else um, you know they're not necessarily the most up-to-date in uh, infrastructure and patching and things of that nature but again this goes back to I thought there was a line that attackers just would not cross at least not intentionally and to bring down an entire health network and I'm not talking an insurance company, I'm talking hospitals for, I, I, I don't even know how long, um, you know, definitely over the weekend. Uh, they didn't pay the ransom. They were able to use disaster recovery. You know, they had their, their continuity plans and everything else like that um, to recover from this. But why? Okay. That's the question I have to ask myself. And that's the question us as security professionals should be asking ourselves. You know, why? Why a hospital? There's all the companies out there that have insurance. And again, I'm not condoning breaching, attacking, bringing down any company or any organization. But if you're going to be malicious and try to gain uh, you know, money or whatever your finance, your motivation is. Come on, let's have some morality, some, and leave the hospital systems and the kids out of it. Because, you know, it just blows my mind. And it honestly makes me wonder how we can do better. And I get it, as security professionals, there's only so much we can do, but we've got to reach these hospitals. We've got to reach these schools. We've got to find ways to talk to these companies, to talk to these organizations, to help them really hone in on their security infrastructure and their software, their tools and whatever they're doing and really stop this from happening. Because let's be honest, attackers will hit the lowest fruit. So whatever the lowest target is, the easiest target for them to hit, that low-hanging fruit is what they're going to go for. And so we really need to um, make things like hospitals and schools and, and you know all the other critical infrastructure. We've got to make it harder for attackers to get into. Because if we don't, they become the low-hanging fruit and they become easy targets. So I know financially it's it's hard. I know hospitals have a lot of money they've got to put out for other things, but we've got to start making security a priority. So as security professionals, let's start reaching out to these hospitals and you know see what we can do, see what help they need. Let's start reaching out to schools. And let's be honest, if you have kids in school, you should want to help their school. If you don't have kids in school, you should still want to help hospitals and schools. It's about ethics and morality. And I'm not saying do it for free. I'm not saying that it's something that you need to go pro bono and, you know, oh, I'm just going to be Robin Hood and do all this stuff. But you need to we need to find a way to get through to them the importance of putting these um mitigations and and lowering their risk footprint and things like that all right so um i hope that we can come together and and, and really find a way to help these companies out i hope we can really take a hard look at how we can defend against this 
in such a way that they're not easy targets. And let's be honest, schools are easy targets. Hospitals are easy targets. A lot of times the money doesn't go to security. It goes to just trying to give kids an education. It goes to trying to keep hospital equipment up and running. The important things. Security is on the back burner. So let's try to change that. Let's try to change that mindset and enable the business, enable these people, enable these hospitals, these schools, all this infrastructure while still, um, you know, securing them. So that's WTF Wednesday. I hope, you know, go ahead, leave your comments down below. If you, if you have a different way of thinking, if you think I'm naive, whatever the case may be, go ahead, drop your comments below. And before you leave, go ahead, hit that like button, hit the subscribe, hit the bell, and uh, get notified anytime I put out a new video. Once again, this Friday is Security Happy Hour live, live, 10 p.m., 2nd October, uh, east, uh, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. So, I hope to see you all there. And if you need to get a hold of me, feel free to reach out. Other than that, you guys have a great Wednesday.